So some of you may have seen a few years ago a video which went relatively viral. Uh, it was a teacher in the States talking to his class, which was composed of about 70% of women, well, girls, rather, and he was proposing a number of changes to school rules. And these school rules were biased towards girls and discriminatory towards the boys. And rule after rule, they were voted in until one boy uh, bravely in the front of the class raised his hand and said, Sir, this is unfair. The girls are the majority of the class, and of course they're going to vote for things that benefit them. And they don't know what it's like to be a boy. This, of course, was the purpose of the lesson. The teacher noted that around 70% of Congress and the Senate and lawmakers were men, and they were legislating for rules that governed the lives, the children, the education, the jobs, and the bodies of women. So a few days ago, I was asked by a local uh, television show to be involved in emulating that experiment, as scientific as it is, uh, in New Zealand. So we went to a class of Auckland students, which was intentionally composed of about 70% odd girls, uh, reflective of about 60, 65% of New Zealand Parliament, which is men. So these rules were proposed, these rules that were biased towards girls. And rule after rule, they were voted down. The girls didn't start voting for the rules which were in favour of them. And I was sitting next to the producer who had their head in their hands, and they were like, what are we going to do? This, is, this is, goes completely against the hypothesis. This is, this is not the show. What are we going to do? It was, it was my role to um, interview the kids uh, after this, so I set about doing that. And as I was talking to the girls and the boys in the class, uh, I found out that they had been in that class for about a year plus together. So they, they weren't new to each other. Then I found out that they thought it was unfair. The two major learnings from that class, firstly, was that they saw themselves as a unit. They had become so familiar with each other that it wasn't a matter of looking at those obvious characteristic distinctions. It was a matter of progressing rules that were beneficial for all of them, together. They wanted to progress together. The other thing in talking to these kids, with the social medias and the internet and whatever they're using nowadays, uh, they, they were incredibly socially aware. All of them knew about the American election. And they were incredibly insightful and aware of the divisiveness and, at times, the hatred that had accompanied the rise of a character like Donald J. Trump. And in being socially aware, they were socially responsible. And they saw themselves as global citizens, and they wanted to shoot down injustice wherever they saw it. So, obviously, this was those rules that were uh, biased, towards the uh, biased towards them and discriminatory towards the boys. So, I think that the two learnings there, those of unity and social responsibility, contrast quite well to what we see in society today. In talking about unity, I think it's quite obvious at least geopolitically, at least globally, that the world is more divided than ever. We are less inclined to speak across political lines. But more than that, in talking about social responsibility, we are less inclined to get outside of our echo chambers. We're less inclined to entertain ideas that conflict with our dogma, with, with our picture of the world. So I think that what we can all do is learn from those kids. Because those kids were feminists. Those kids believed in equality. So, quite frankly, to leave you with two things, it's that the future is feminist, 
And it's that in order to solve all of these problems that we've got right now, we just need to reach across that divide, and we need to be inclusive. Thank you. <laughs>